and we are live. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Como? You got it. <laughs> uh, how are you? Good. I'm doing great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you have like a radio voice. You, you I have a radio play. voice. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> this afternoon we are listening. Stevie yeah. Wonder. Great Who year. knows what evil <laughs> lurks in the hearts of men? The yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you can do so. So it's all like that. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you for accepting my invitation. Sure. It's really, really interesting to have access to guys like you. Of course, I, I already interviewed some people that are illustrators, uh, but more involved in the comic book industry. Mm -hmm. But uh, you are the first one I, I have that kind of is in the in the business of uh, TV shows or or movies. Uh, mm -hmm. That's something that i i know because i'm a fan but never have the chance to interact uh, with someone from that side and especially starting because of course i'm a i'm a tricky at heart so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um so first of all i uh, well i want to thank you and if you can introduce yourself in a few words because my illness is really broad uh, Sure, yeah. Uh, uh, my name is Joe Como. I'm a concept artist and art director. Uh, I've worked primarily in TV for, for, um, for my relatively short career um, in the industry. And uh, I have a background in illustration and art direction. Um, yeah, I, I went to school at Pratt in Brooklyn and um, and uh, got into graphic design and, um, and art direction. I worked at a fashion uh, and fragrance house for a while, mm -hmm. and then started working uh, with advertising illustration, and then <clears throat> ended up moving out to LA and jumped into film and TV. That's, that's amazing. But well, I'm a graphic designer too, but I never went to that far as you as illustration. I, I was used to do illustration when I was very young, but then if like everything you don't practice, uh, then you sure yeah. I I, I was uh, more passionate about music, so I you can you can be good for everything, so you have to choose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um no but that's a really interesting introduction so for a start um you you always was passionate about uh i don't know graphic design or illustration or you, yeah you were a for, comic sure. Book fan, uh, for sure yeah ever since i mean i've always drawn since, since uh, you were little? One, you know yo yeah. yeah 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 as as long as i can remember i, I was drawing I was drawing He-Man, and then when I got into comic books, I was drawing comic book characters and making my own comic books, and that's that's kind of what really got me into drawing. I wanted to draw comic books, and uh, yeah. But Just, you you created I never your, did. Your I never comic. did, but yeah, when yeah, I was but, younger, yeah, when I was younger, I did, of course, yeah. But you you create your own characters? Oh yeah. Yeah, you, you can share one with. I would just look. I I don't have any. I don't have any on me right no, now. No, no, no. But just, uh, just to know. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were. What... <clears throat> um, it you know just straight rips off of off of comic books I was reading at the time. Do you remember Darkhawk? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I did a I did a pretty decent Darkhawk rip off. You know. <laughs> Um, and then when, when image came out, I was doing, you know, all my characters were, looked like Rob Liefeld characters and with you know, a lot had, of poaches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The, the whole thing, the, yeah. the whole thing was all ripped off all, all my favorite. No, I was asking yeah. you because is when I was, uh, talking with Eric Larson, the, the other, the other day, he was telling, uh, that the inspiration of his more famous character, the Chavez dragon. He came when he was a uh, little, you know. Yeah, he was He's little. Yeah, and, uh, I remember that He's Batman. And then ripoff, he, right? he dropped it to work for Marvel and DC. And when he yeah. had the chance, uh, he just take it back. So who knows? Maybe you yeah. still have time. 
<laughs> yeah. So I, never had, I never had drive enough to put pages together. Um, and that I know is a big part of, of getting work as a, as a uh, comic book artist, putting pages mm. together. But. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It, I, I think it's harder than it looks. <laughs> oh, it's... I mean, I, I have. I just haven't put enough of a portfolio together to, mm. to go for it. No, the, that's great. So you started as a comic book fan and yeah, a film fan, I, I, I guess, too. Yeah, all of the, right, yep. Yeah, all of the drawing more or less kind of funneled through comic books. And then when I got mm -hmm. into, when I got to college, it all kind of, <clears throat> it rolled into uh, more, more of an editorial focus. You know, ev where I went to school, all of the illustration was, learn how to draw for magazines and newspapers and, mm, and more you know, practical solve, sure yeah solve visual problems read the story and and come up with creative ideas to for illustrating it and focusing more on one image and not really as much on sequences hmm. okay yeah i understand but that was um because they they wanted to teach something to you know with money uh like yeah, they didn't. Like they didn't go. want anything to do. Really, they had a comic book class. I think they may have had one or two. And I, I drew comics when I was in college. I, we, um, my buddy Dan and I were on this uh, comic called The Static Fish in uh, when I was at Pratt. He went on to design uh, uh, Adventure Time. He does the. He did the. Mm. Uh, Design the world for Adventure Time. Go Shrimp. That's that's Dan. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, in college it was comics don't sell. You know, you won't get a yeah. job in, at, as a comic book artist. And they wanted to sell their school as more of an editorial illustration, more mm. editorial and fine arts. And then they had an architecture program, so they didn't want to be the comic book school. So sure. it was kind of frowned on. So they but, crush uh, your dreams uh, right away. <laughs> that, you know, it's more of a it's more of a firm push in a direction that might make you money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. Course. So I know oh, even but, even now it's difficult to to make money as a comic book artist. Of course, it's not like in the in this. I don't know. The, I think in the seventies, uh, maybe the eighties, uh, there was a huge. Uh, but there were people that were living that twenty four seven. Oh, well, in the 90s, 2000, there, there was like a huge uh, explosion with image comics. And yeah, yeah, people start winning a lot of money. But uh, yeah, yeah, now these days, it, I think it's harder, um, especially with movies and, and TV, sh TV shows. You know, it's like it's the same character, but the format change. You know, right. So it's yeah. less appealing for young people, I think. Although I heard, <clears throat> I hear, or it seems like a lot of, uh, or some creators are kind of gearing themselves towards selling their comic book ideas to hmm. film and TV companies like Netflix. Like Mark Mark Millar has his own Millarverse and sells everything to Netflix, or or hmm. you know any whoever is going to come and get it. I just read that Webtoons has uh, is starting a production arm. Hmm. Oh, that's so great. that's kind of cool. Yeah. There's a film based on a graphic novel. What is the... Yeah, there are a lot of them. Yeah, but it's the first time that the, the writer was, the, was involved in the, in the production. I can... It was released this uh, this year on Netflix. Okay, uh, it's the people that uh, they they shoot him and they can die. I forgot, I forgot the name. <laughs> but it's based on, on a graphic novel, and what, yeah, it was the first time that that uh, something like that happened because usually the 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 writer had sell the right, and then there's right. another writer, another director. Ah. Yeah, he made a script. That, that that's something I never heard before. Yeah, that that's happened. cool. Yeah. yeah, but I can remember that. <laughs> so, um, so at what university you went? Pratt. I went to 
I went to Pratt Institute in Brooklyn. Okay. And that is uh, specializing, I don't know. It's a, art. it's an art, it's an art college. Yeah. It's an art college in New York. Yep. Yeah. So you, you study there and then you start to work in some agency. Yeah. I started there and then <laughs> I, I moved out to California instantly to try and get a job at Pixar. I didn't, I didn't yeah. have any idea. I didn't have any idea what I was doing, but uh, friends of mine uh, and I all moved out to try and get, to try and get work at, at Pixar and none of us were anywhere close. As you Like what, completely why? different yeah. skill set as we, in, what's in like, you had the idea or you have uh, someone. We loved, we just, lo yeah, we loved it. And, and um, no, actually one of our, uh, my friend's brother my friend's friend's brother worked there and would, ah. i think would talk to him every now and then would talk to the guy every now and then um and i guess he got in he got his his work in front of people by just working for pixar moving moving furniture and then his he just like left a sketchbook around one day and someone was like oh that's cool what do you do and then he got an interview, I guess, and then it went well and they got in. But for us, we just had no idea what we were doing. So we, we got odd jobs and, and uh, eventually I left, uh, left San Francisco to take a uh, graphic design job. And then from there, moved back to New York and just worked some connections and got into an uh, advertising agency and then worked there for a while. In New York or Los Angeles? In Soho, yeah, in New York. Mm. Yep. What? What was hard the transition between New York and Los Angeles for you? Uh, not, not really. I mean, uh, the first thing I did when I came out here was when I went to film school. I went to AFI, mm. um, uh, American Film Institute Conservatory, out here. And so when I moved out here, I had a whole kind of network automatically oh, okay. to that film ah, school. Great. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah. That kind of yeah, you know, school in general is expensive. Yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta go into debt usually to uh, uh, yeah to get that to get that education. Yeah, and I was you know that's a it's it's a similar it's a similar um, career path, but it's it's different enough where you get a couple years of school and you're you're much better off than someone just trying to break in without any mm. without any notion of what the industry is about so you know it was great to get production experience because a lot of it was here's money go take a movie or go make a movie and then raise money go make a movie that's like the the final piece of it is you raise money with a bunch of with a couple of people that you team up with and then you make yeah. a movie. So they have they have a production design program in that school and the production designers team up with the cinematographers and the directors, you know, all uh, of the different okay. disciplines in the school and they come together and they make a film. And uh, that's that's what people kind of try and use as their calling card. So that the school yeah. gave me enough uh, enough of a foundation to right. enough of a foundation and a portfolio to go out and try and get like, which is essentially like mm -hmm. a PA job, like the, a really low level job in the art department in film. And that's how what is that that's PA? How it it's a PA stands for production assistant, but uh, it's okay. kind of a general, you know, you are the lowest level of, mm. of whatever department you, you go into. Sure. So um, there's an art department PA and PA is just kind of a blanket assistant. Yeah. Could be um, just drawing something or get coffee. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, coffee and lunches. And yeah, uh, I, I knew SketchUp. So I was doing, uh, I was doing a little bit of SketchUp modeling because not many people at that time were, uh, were 3D savvy. So it was, Ah, that's that was cool. a good in, um, mm. and I could draw too. So mm. it was a, you know, do a three D model, draw over it, or mm. paint over it, or you know, 
And how was your your first uh, impression when you start to get a little bit into the industry? Was like you you imagine or? It's just you know without without going through and even if you do go through as a you know a school that teaches you about film without really jumping into the industry as a as a PA you're you're you know kind of lost and when you when you get into a higher level you know if you're working on independent projects it's very different because everyone does everything mm. whereas if you're on like a TV show like one of the things I did when I was at that school is I shadowed more or less PA, but I wasn't a PA. It was more of a shadow. I went in and shadowed a production designer who was working on Castle, mm. um, a TV show, uh, and kind of saw how everyone was working and every you know who did what, and you know they had a graphic designer and a set designer and their art director, and the designer works with the set de decorator and the props people and special effects and all that. You know, just kind of got got my feet wet in in an in industry that's very you know it's everyone has their job and it's very segmented it's very it's, different it's than, crazy than it's very specific independent specialized. yeah yeah but and then yeah eventually yeah. eventually you know those pa jobs just had me meet enough people where mm. someone said you know hey um come and work on this show and um, I don't. I don't know if you know, but in the industry out here, you have to be in the union if you want to work All on right. anything. If you want to work on any TV show, let's say like a network TV show, yeah. If it's part of the, it's if it's a network uh, show, usually it's a union show, um, which means um, everyone who's working on it also has to be in a union. Really? And so, yeah. So in order to like for the TV show I'm on right now, everyone who works on the show is a union member. And we all, we all have our different unions, like the art director's union is the one that I'm in. And we have the set designers and the illustrators and, and, um, Matt painters and all those people and uh, the art directors and production designers, obviously. And then props have their own set deck has their own, mm. um, you know the producers have their own. Sure. And what? Why is the reason that you have to be? You know, is it like a tradition? Is to protect the, um, it's, the workers? Yeah, it's 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 workers' rights, it's pay protection. You know, mm. um, you know, it's making making sure that um, you know, part part of it is is quality control, oh, okay. and making sure that the people who are doing the jobs who are who are, who are um, you know, liable. Mm. So if, uh, you know, if a, if a driver who's working on your show isn't, isn't a union driver, it's, you know, chances are he may not know what, you know, what he needs to know in order to make sure everyone's safe. So that's, that's part of it. Just like um, and then the other part of this is, Pay protection, yeah, making sure that um, a whole bunch of people get together and say, this is what we want you to pay us. Hmm. And we're not going to work for you unless you pay us this much money. And that's every union will negotiate their base rate for different tiers of production. Wow. So like a, a big budget film, a film with a enormous budget, they'll have a different base rate than a TV show that has a big budget or an independent show or something for Netflix or something for YouTube. They all have different yeah. base rates negotiated. And then you can get more, but they can't pay you less than that. And mm. that's that's the big reason is-, oh, is that's uh, crazy. Well, yeah. for me, here is normal because here in France, unions, they are everywhere. They have a lot of, of power. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's why, uh, you know, the government think twice before change something that will affect the the workers. Uh, yeah. But in the United States, uh, I don't know. I um, Well, of course, I, I hear a little of the unions, but I didn't know that in the the film industry was was something like that. But oh, I think yeah, that. No, but that, that's great. Because if yeah. finally you have is the only way that you you know you can compensate a little. Uh, yeah, the 
it's it's basically I making it so it. that you have more you I have more of a say in what you get paid and yeah. it's not just the company saying this is you know this is the going rate so we're not going to pay you anymore you don't have any you mm. know you don't have any leverage really yes unless you're, yeah. unless you're really good especially if you're not good at all <laughs> you just yeah. you just want to make money yeah sure at least in this case you have you have a, a, a union negotiating for your minimum wage oh that's great so yeah. when you, you start as, as, a, um, as a pa i started I, yeah i started as a pa and then went to assistant art director and that's when i when i got into the union I was working for a movie, a sci-fi movie that uh, decided to go union. They were, they had enough of a budget and uh, enough people were kind of pushing them in the, in the union direction. Yeah. And they had to, they had to sign up basically. It's, yeah. You pay and then you have to pay your people and pay into, pay into the union when you pay them and, and there's mm. healthcare pieces of it as well, um, and fringe benefits, things like that, that that the production has to pay for when you mm. when you continue. But um, if you're on a show that goes union, everyone on the show has the opportunity to sign up to be in the union, and it's tough to get into the union. You have to either be on a show like that mm. that that flips in or um, you know, as an illustrator you can, or an art director, you can get in, I think as, as an illustrator or a set designer, you can get in um, if the production just calls mm. or, or the production calls the union and says, hey, this is the guy we want to use. They get, I think they get one of those every show you work on. But mm. then um, what's the other way to get in? Um, I feel like there's a, um, I think the 80, my union has an apprenticeship program now. Mm. Um, yeah, there are a couple other ways to get in, but it's tough. So, um, yeah, I guess because uh, it is, uh, everyone wants to, um, there's a lot of, of demand and not so many slots to fill, I think. There's that too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Especially in, in, a, in, for the set designers, there aren't as many set designers as mm. there are jobs so what, a lot of the time. So what was the first film you, you worked? The safe industry? sci-fi it was called i think it's now called battle for sky arc no i mean okay. no, no one will i'm sure <laughs> no one will know it. yeah it's not in your portfolio <laughs> i don't have anything from that movie in my portfolio <laughs> anymore um yeah not anymore but that sh i worked on uh i was i was technically an assistant art director on that show i was doing set design i was doing storyboards i was doing concept art i was doing a ton of stuff on that show mm -hmm. and we were just it was you know really low budget but enough of enough of a budget to uh to get us in yeah so i got in and i got my uh art director designation so i got you know i was working as an assistant art director so i got mm -hmm. my assistant art director card and cool. was able to take jobs yeah it's mm -hmm. kind of like a video game you go to the yeah you level up yeah, yeah. For sure mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so then what what, what was next after that? well uh, i worked for um i worked a bunch of just low budget things um i worked on this show polis um mm -hmm. that it won a Regency film contest, but it was um, it's a sci-fi show. We did a bunch of like low budget, low budget things. I worked with the guys that did. Have you seen um, Next Gen? On, yeah, yeah. On Netflix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joe Sander. Uh, I worked with him on a. He's the director of that. Uh, I worked with him on uh, a short, one of his short films. Um, but uh, and then I I had met um, Carrie Meyer, who was the the production designer on Firefly, you know, Firefly. Mm -hmm. Of course. So I, I met him um, and he called me and asked me if, if he wanted, if uh, I wanted to, to um, work on, 
well, I had, I had worked with him on um, on a show called Vegas, just as an as an assistant to the art director. I wasn't in the union at that point, so I couldn't be an assistant art director. I was assistant to the art director. Um, but yeah, we worked together for a minute, hit it off, and then he called me when he had, um, I think it was like five, Fox, Fox's first kind of low budget foray into streaming, I think. Um, anyway, a low budget Fox show called Legends with Sean Bean, and yeah. um, really, really cool show. Sean Bean was awesome in it. Um, but he called me in to do some art direction for him for that. So I went in and did that. And then we moved from that show to Scorpion uh, on CBS. And wait, wait because I uh, I missed that. Scorpion? You, you, you did what in that show? Uh, art direction. So I was doing art direction in both those cases. So I worked, I worked as an assistant art director for a little bit. And then, and then he asked me to art direct a TV show. So I art directed for him. And then we moved to another show called Scorpion. Yeah. Uh, no, but I was a big, uh, big fan of that show. Oh, even if, go. if, yeah. Even if it was not, um, how do I say, scientifically, Accurate sometimes. <laughs> oh, not scientifically accurate at all. TV accurate, yeah. But uh, yeah. but it was fun. It was fun because um, I don't know. It was um, but, but it's clearly it was a geek show. You know, it was like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. No, but it was it was yep. really cool because I don't know. It's something like that it existed before, and and no, it was uh, the story was interesting. Of course. Uh, You know, was not taste that great, but well, if you yeah. you just uh, what what is the concept when you you just um, suspend uh, disbelief? Well, <laughs> that's yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, that's, that's, yeah. Really cool. every every science fiction and, and fantasy show. Yeah, you just have to. Mm. Except a Star Trek, Star Trek, some serious stuff. Yeah, yeah. especially <laughs> Star Trek, especially Star Trek. No, but yeah. in a Scorpion, you can you explain a little because for you it's obvious, but for some people don't know what it means to be an art director. What what you did in that show is specifically to so people can yeah. Well, that. I mean, so um, the production designer on a show is the guy who's kind of responsible for the look of of the show, the sets, the locations all the making sure that everything everything looks the way it, it needs to look looks the way it's scripted to look and and how the producers want it to look and uh you know sets sets that tone for the show and then all of those things need to be executed on right and that's what the art director does the art director takes all of that visual information that you get from the production designer and make sure that it gets done and gets mm. on time and on budget and gets gets on uh gets to the shooting day so for example up. for the headquarters of the scorpion mm -hmm. you have like a description like yeah you like to look like an old building or yeah yeah i mean on on that show we had a pilot to look at so mm. a pilot is is you know like Yeah, it's, it's the, the first, first TV uh, show that gets made, right? Yeah. So the network will pay for, all right, we'll buy a pilot and we'll see. Hmm. And so they make a bunch of pilots and then they make only a couple of them they turn into series. They get, you know, we'll we'll pay for, uh, you know, and in, in I think we got 22 episodes from the pilot. So the pilot was a whole different team of, of people that's, uh, I think, Justin Lin. Is it Justin Lin, the Fast and the Furious guy? I think it was Justin Lin. He directed it and um, a whole different team of people, um, except mm -hmm. for the, some of the producers um, were on the, the series. So we kind of took a look. He, he took a look at what that what they had done for that pilot episode and expanded and, and detailed out something that was, was uh, you know, more, more usable for a whole season. And I think they, I don't know if they, I can't remember at this point whether the pilot had a set built or whether they just went into a warehouse in downtown Los Angeles and, and did it like that. But um, yeah, we built we built 
two big sets on on mm. uh, on no, stage. Well, yeah. I, I was thinking it was a really ambitious show because they travel all over the world. Yeah. It reminded me a little yeah. like the A team. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The nerd A team. Yeah, sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like that. But I love the yeah. interaction between the characters. You know, you have, you know, every character is different. You have the, you know, the, yep. the psychologies, the, the leader that is kind of autistic. Right. Kind of. Right. Yeah. No, what yeah. I think was interesting it was a really interesting show. Uh, I watch all every season. <laughs> but for That's example, awesome. yeah, I did. I did the first three, uh, and then and did not come back for the fourth. Took a, but took what, a what what your you thoughts about it? You like it? You don't like it? Oh, I mean, it, art directing Scorpion was an amazing experience for me. I feel like we're talking about leveling up. I feel like I leveled way up. On mm -hmm. that show, uh, I I designed a couple episodes of the show. Um, the designer uh, was, I think, at the end he was doing something else. The end of the first season, he he got another gig that he was doing during the the hiatus between season mm -hmm. one and season two. So I directed the last two episodes, I want to say, and then he, um, I I mean, not directed, uh, production designed the last two episodes. And then he um, he directed an episode, and I designed it. So, mm. I mean, you know, going going from just getting to the union as a assistant art director, yeah. more or less, doing a couple little things, and then jumping to art director, and then what uh, do you think is the, is the more challenging stuff when when you you start to to do an art direction and. You know the What's deadline. The, uh, what? Um, the most challenging. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Probably the the most challenging thing, honestly, is is uh, is the last minute the last minute changes in requests. Those are the most challenging things. Um, you froze on me. Yes. <laughs> you oh, too. Okay. Yeah, we're right. back. We're back. <laughs> All right. I wasn't sure. Maybe the audio cut out too. But yeah, the most challenging things are are uh, the last minute changes in requests when you really have to um, uh, yes. think on your feet and figure out like, oh, okay, we're changing it. We need we need something completely different. We need to figure out what we have and how we can change it and use it to make make the director happy. Make the I make remember the an episode on his face. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first uh, the first episode of season three, I think, was in space. Yeah, we we built a little spaceship, a little space shuttle. Yeah, yeah. there's a rocket involved, and oh yeah, yeah. Because for I don't know how how was the budget for the series, but um, but I don't know. It was uh, you, you make the most of it of it, right? <laughs> I, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, we had you went to Africa a budget for, for a TV show. But, uh, it's never enough money, no matter what. You know, you always want sure. more, so you can do yeah. what what they want to what they want you to do, what they've written down on the page. And you know, that was another that's another part that the you know, as an art director, I work with also, but it's more of a production designer and a and a production role to kind of look at what's been written and then say we can't we can't <laughs> do this with the amount of money that you're giving us yes. um, uh, what happened there <laughs> because my, right. me as a graphic designer something happened that uh, they ask you yeah we need this uh, website uh, with its dimension this will turn on yeah. 3d and we, we have like this is the budget and we need it for uh, tomorrow uh, yeah what right. no yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. so and in this case so it's, we, need a, kind of we need polite. a cave you know we need a cave where we can spelunk in or we need the side of a cliff that we can put a ferrari on <laughs> that was like that 
that was a big challenge at the, the end of season one with uh, uh yes because he he go crazy and drives yeah he the crashes Ferrari. off yeah he crashes yeah. off the side of the the side of the road and is hanging for that's like the end of the second to last episode and then the last episode mm. he's like hanging on the yeah. that was a big yeah and we so we built a big mountainside on set and uh yeah we built, really? we built a big mountainside and yeah got a fake with Ferrari. <laughs> Ferrari on there and yeah. Was that yeah, real Ferrari? It was no, it's it was a it was a body kit. Um, you know, like a fake a fake Ferrari <laughs> body. <nightmare>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there there was a I believe they had a real Ferrari for most of all all the exterior driving stuff, and then they had to be because the uh, uh, crash. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. that that will be a very expensive stunt. For sure. <laughs> For sure. I mean, it was still a very expensive stunts, but mm. yeah. No, but that's uh, that's great. No, I didn't know that you because I saw that in your portfolio that you work for um, Alter Carbon. Picard. Yeah. Are there yeah, some yeah, the same that same designer, Carrie Meyer, um, was working on. He did um, what's that that kung fu post 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 apocalyptic show where um, what's it called a blood something. Um, Kung Fu Post Apocalyptic Show. Yeah, it is a Netflix show that was ah, what was it called? Ah, uh, you like me? It's like set. It's set in the South where they have all these these like warring families, and they're in ah, uh, what's it called? I forget what it's called. But he did that, and then he jumped to Altered Carbon, and it was more like he had a set he was working on, and he asked me, "Hey, can you help me?" Put this set in 3D. So you, and, you went to Alter Carbon right away after. Scorpion, I was or? doing. I, I think I I did it at the end of. I feel like I did it at the end of season three. Um, I remember working on it while I was in that office. Yeah, but it was. I mean, it was it was helping him visualize a set, um, the street set for Alter Carbon. Yeah. Um, and you know, it was more like SketchUp stuff, and then I took that SketchUp and I, yeah. I did a rendering. And that's your and, main you know, tool, with SketchUp, or do you work I, with different? I use SketchUp very, very sparingly now. I I mine it for for uh, models, and every now and then I'll do a, a construct, a, you know, a working drawing in SketchUp. Uh, I know it enough. Uh, I remember enough of it to be able to take other people's models in SketchUp and clean them up and export them and, and do what I need to do with them. But, um, but that's yeah. is your main tool. I use blender now, ah, I used blender. To use Sketchup, but now I use blender and, and Photoshop primarily. Yeah. Yeah. And you, of course, well, I, I mean, you do nothing on paper. You, you, everything is on. Um, well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ideation that happens on, on paper. You know, a lot of sketching and kind of figuring ah. out what the what the design is, and and mm. you know, in the case of a set, it's just like doing thumbnails of you know what um, what the floor plan of the set will be, mm. and kind of riffing on ideas for the floor plan, and then it's always kind of all right. That looks cool. Let's get it into three D and see see what the issues will be. Well, we can see a little of your work here. Sure, yeah. Everything is here is in Blender. Or... No, um, it's this stuff is a so the Ultra Carbon one that's SketchUp, um, the Picard stuff to the right of that, like that that set, the Picard set to the right of that. That's an example of of hand sketching and um, mm. so yeah, you click on that Picard set. No, I, that's I yeah, you look at look yeah. at this one. This is uh, I didn't do any sketching for this because I worked off of floor plans of the location. So I did a model from you know an actual location. They were working inside of a oh, old right. printing press, like newspaper printing press facility in in mm. Canada, and you know, so I did did a model of it and then did a little render. And then did the um, yeah, cool. 
a little like Blade Runner. Blade Runner. <laughs> yeah, and that I think that's what they were they were kind of shooting for something mm. in that vein. Yeah. But you were saying this one. Yeah, the Picard stuff actually has hand sketching in there. If you're looking for hand sketching, yeah, that's his that's his archive at the beginning of the show. Um that was yeah i love that he have everything <laughs> <laughs> like if you really are a fan uh, you will recognize all the the little details yeah and that's part of part of the design part of the thought that goes into to making work for the show is you know how can we do things to how can we drop easter eggs for the fans mm. how can we get the fans more involved what is the so this is a SketchUp. This is a Blender. This is this is actually all Moto, and the ones at the very bottom that's Gravity Sketch and VR. So you can see, like I started with those little pencil uh, sketches, and then took the pencil yes. sketches into into Gravity, or I took them into Moto, and then kind of ideated and built things out. And uh, you know, those are some you know. Yeah before we really know what kind of space we have on stage to work with before we really know what the space needs to be it's mm -hmm. hey we need a you know we need a quantum archive for picard where he keeps all his all Memories. his yeah memorabilia for missions all the information on missions and he can access anything he wants from all of starfleet all of all yeah. of their archives essentially so when but, because we Sorry, I we went to. <laughs> I think we skip uh, a little because I, I want to go in order because you want a scorpion, then alter yeah. carbon, and then right where do you start to work for Picard or before you you were working in something else? Oh, um, yeah, after scorpion, I did a bunch of um, a bunch of smaller shows, um for various various tv shows basically and and independent things um i hope how people were contacting you was you have an agent or they contact no, you directly no it's just word of mouth and then there's a there's a list so you're when you're in the union you get on availability list yeah and you want to Yes, exactly. Yeah. And as an art director, I hire people like that all the time. Like I ask my friends, Hey, do you have any, do you have any recommendations for me? And if they don't, or any of their recommendations are not uh, available, I turn to the list that we have in the union and start looking at portfolios or looking at uh, resumes and calling them up and seeing okay. who's available. Yeah. But it's only people that are in the new, you know, for example, there's no way that you can show, call, yeah, you well, can call someone in France and say, yeah, this guy is really good. Uh, right, you know? right. Well, so when I, I can't, uh, as, as an art director, you get permission basically to work as an art director or assistant art director or a production designer on a show. So that's one designation within the art department or the art director's guild. But so I can't work as a set designer or an illustrator or uh, a mad artist or a graphic designer uh, without getting into the union again under one of those. A range of works that you can do. Right, yeah. So I, I did the same, how I got my illustrator's card and was able to work as an illustrator was I had, uh, I knew that you know, a production could hire you if the producers basically just call the union and say, we want, we have need of one illustrator. This illustrator is the one we want. Can we hire him? And then that's, you know, that's how I got in. Mm. So I was working for a, uh, the pilot of a show that never saw the light of day called run for your life. It's like a, um, uh, wait, like a, south america like kind of mayan horror really film where yeah a guy has to has one one day to live i guess one day to make up for his mistakes and he's chased by this cult uh oh. who's run by by I want to see that show. To death. yeah <laughs> i mean it was i i thought it was cool yeah we i, I got to design a bunch of cool mm. sets for that show and but it happened a lot that sometimes there's um kind of a 
you start to work on something and they say, Joe, sorry. Happens all the time in TV. And this, yeah. this show was a, a pilot, right? So, I mean, you know, the chances of it actually going to series are. So now you're get used to it. You, you know, better you than, better than not having a show, but, but sure. not. Not but you great. don't get frustrated or say, "Wow, fuck!" Uh, I put so uh, much effort. Uh, no. Yeah, I mean, I got I got paid for it, so. Oh, sure. <laughs> I haven't really. There's one thing on my website from that show that I've that I've shown. Uh, really? I, think I was. I've been thinking about putting the rest of the stuff on there, but. Uh, Which one? I just haven't had the guts to yet because it. I haven't really gotten permission. Uh, vehicles and props. I think it's in vehicles and props. Yeah, we had, I designed a bunch of uh, kind of knives and weapons and machetes and things like that for the show. Because mm. um, set in present day, but it needed to have like a, a Mayan flair to it. So, yeah, that one. Uh, this one. Aztec flavored weapons, yeah. But, for example, you do that and you get paid to do that. Uh, they own this stuff? Or hey, you sign you sign a, uh, a you sign a contract basically that says you can't you can't show anything, and typically <laughs> what you do is is you show things once it comes out, you know. So uh, once the show is released, once it's out and available for public consumption, then you can put okay put your work up. I know it's it's tighter for different shows. I think the Marvel shows are much tighter because I don't know a lot of different reasons, but you know, so you do a bunch of quick sketches and then paint a couple up and. Oh, this look real cool. It looked like it would hurt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a, like a battle baseball with some. Yeah, it was kind of you know they have these they have these Aztec swords that are made of wood and then they have these yeah. uh, kind of crystals stuck into the you know yeah. basically like sharpened hmm. um, i think it's like onyx or something like that that are stuck yeah. like into grooves in the outsides and and glued in so we were trying to do like all right what would they be if they were present day los angeles oh maybe they use a baseball bat maybe they use yeah. machete and cut the grooves no, it's a real yeah. original idea but why why sometimes the good idea well good or bad is relative of course but um wh why sometimes um, a show didn't pick up wh why they 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 prefer cancel the the stuff to to do it they make uh, like kind of a research it could just be it could just yeah it could just be their focus groups don't like it or it could be uh, like they, yes. they watch it and they don't think it fits this year and then mm. You know, it could just be that they have too many other shows that are promising, and it just doesn't make the cut. Yeah. You know? Yes. But, but basically, the money is uh don't because yeah, money and money and and you know they they uh yeah I mean money <laughs> or, so money and then they have a limited at at least. At one time, they had a limited yes. amount of program. Time, time and money. Well, but they had a limited amount of space. At one time, they had a limited amount of space for content. You mm. know, there's only so many days. There's only only so sure. many time slots to put things in, and yeah. Now, now it's much different. Now, you know, a show like Run for Your Life could have probably made it, really? made it a lot further. I would, what, I would think, what yeah. yeah. Well, just just more opportunities for for uh for more content like there's no no limit to the time slots now mm. you know, there's no there are no time slots really i mean there are yeah. there's shows on tv in different time slots you can watch them live sure or you yeah. know when they're aired but now like netflix yeah. doesn't have, you know they could netflix, Prime it's Video. really just a question of how much money they want to spend in a year they can buy as many shows as they want and put them on their website they don't i don't think they have any limit as how much as to yeah. how they can store or stream um, yeah oh you're right but so oh that was that was cool 
and and then you get to to Picard or before you were? Um, yeah, that I worked on Crazy Ex Girlfriend, which okay. is another CBS show. Um, I worked on that for a little bit, and then um, yeah, very various things here and there, and then and then uh, Picard with uh, the designer on that show was. Um, I had been working for um, on and off. I did a uh, Call of Duty commercial with him. Um, I, he was one of my instructors at, at AFI where I went to film school and mm. we just kind of kept in touch and I would always send him my illustrations and kind of poke him for work. And, and uh, yeah, he, we just, you know, kept missing each other. And on this one, he finally had something in town. Like he works on all sorts of big shows um, as an assistant. He director. was your teacher, but what's that? He was your teacher. Yeah, he taught a class at um, AFI. Yep. What What was the class? Oh, I don't. It has some. I think it probably had some silly name like like um, you know Design Three or or second year design uh, too you know just you know some really non-descriptive well, yeah. name yeah yeah but it, it was kind of a general film design class where he um he was showing us some software he was coming in and showing us some uh production techniques like we learned about mold making and we learned some software and he brought in his portfolio and showed us you know how he breaks down scripts and how he plans movies and he does a lot of supervising art directing which is the guy who works under the production designer and kind of manages the whole entire art department you know schedules out all of the set mm. designers and how many you know here's a script how many set designers do you think we'll need how many illustrators do we need how long will it take for them to do their jobs and to illustrate a set or 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 draw a set um so he kind of gave us the in and all those, and then That's recently kind of a within the last decision, I, I guess when I'm when you, it's kind of a stressful decision to say, yeah, we will need this and this because if you do it wrong, then you will not gonna. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's you are uh, not gonna arrive to the deadline. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Or so or do it, or we'll make the deadline, but not for that amount of money. It's going to be a lot more. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's their that's that job is you know it's part of it's part of an art director's job but in the, on those kind of scales it takes you know special skill to to, mm. to know like here you know we need we are going to need all this labor and all this time and you know or it's going to need to be smaller mm. or, or different because we won't be able to make it for that amount of money yeah Sure. It's, yeah, it's really interesting. So yeah, we we uh, we hooked up, and he asked me to come on uh, to Picard, and I started out as an illustrator, and um, and then moved into art directing once we started mm. getting into production. And I did a lot of location work on that show, and did a lot of you know painting over photos that I took of locations, and trying to figure out what kind of sets we were going to build, and. Yeah, all sorts of all sorts of good stuff on season one. Yeah, no, it's a great show for me. It really feel like a movie. All the and it's really ambitious because sometimes you say, "Well, is this a TV show? They were gonna stay close to the ship," but no, there's a lot of oh, there's yeah. a lot of different scenarios and tons of locations, tons of sets. Yeah, yeah, a lot of Borg, right? Yeah, <laughs> a lot of Romulans. Yeah. yeah, but you you were a fan of the Star Trek before or, or never? Yeah, I could pull some of my toys down. Yeah, I have them, I have them behind me. Yeah, really. Uh, but uh, oh, oh so, big time. Yeah, I used to watch Star Trek every every Saturday night with my with my dad and my family. Yeah, we would we would watch Next Generation every every Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's crazy. But so. How how it feel like when this guy your, your your old teacher and kind of a friend tell you, yeah, you want to work for Picard? You were like, oh, just, yeah. yeah, definitely, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You were it's like, yes. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the biggest, the biggest kick for me is, you know, do you want to come and do some, you know, you'll do some art direction, but we'll start you as a concept designer and you'll get to design things that will be in the show. You know, yeah. one, of, one of my illustrations is in the show. It's like, it's not a, it's not a uh, set that made it into the show. It's the illustration actually is in the show and he's, you can really? see him walking Wait, along. What? Yeah. It's in there. It's in my, it's in my uh, portfolio? portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. It was an unfinished illustration that uh, I was working on at the time. And then they were like, Oh, we need something that looks like uh, an architectural illustrated model of what, you know, what this building is going to be. It's in sets and environments, mm -hmm. but um and I wasn't finished with it. And I was just like, this is not even close to finished. <laughs> it was just like, it's fine. We'll put it in. It'll be great. And uh, on the left, one? the one right after that one right there. Yeah. The Daystrom. Yeah. So trying to figure out what the exterior of Daystrom would look like. And it doesn't look anything like that. And, uh, you know, thank God in, <laughs> in the final. But uh, if you scroll down, I think I have the... Yeah, so that's what made it into the into the movie. Yeah, so there he meets Gerardi right there on that catwalk, and then comes in. Ah, and, yes. kind of I in yeah. and I was just blown away when they were they were doing it on set, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" And the director came up and was like, "Don't we have?" He was asking the uh, the playback guy, "Don't we have an illustration for you know a nice picture for that for that?" And he put it up, and I was like, "Oh, this is awesome!" And then I saw the cut with Picard <laughs> walking right in front of it. It's like, oh my God. I should have got a picture with him in front of it, but. Sure. But what was your inspiration to do, to do this one? I just, a, a bunch of talks with, with the production designer. You know, originally he was. It's like a cascade, like there's water. Yeah, water and steps. And, you know, it's supposed yeah. to be on the cliffs of, uh, of, uh, that is really beautiful. I think Okinawa is where it is. Yeah, um, but in that illustration, it's supposed to be the the circular building right there on the right is supposed to be kind of the mothballed lab. Like they've they've uh, basically told all the people that are in in the synth building business, you know, can't do it mm -hmm. anymore, and they've decided to build up a, a bigger and grander Daystrom Institute around it. So that's why there's like some dump trucks there and it's, it's supposed to be a construction site, but I never, you know, I never fully finished it before it went in. And then sure. they, they were basically just like scrape all of the construction stuff away <laughs> and, and just, you know, give us, give us something clean to work with. And, you know, so <laughs> really the only, I would, I had just started to make it better you know, just kind of like revise it and refine it. And, uh, it, you know, no, that's very, very, very close cool. to the, uh, very, very close to the, the base model. And from the top, it's like a circle or. Yeah. It's these kind of, it's these kind of rings and, and air mm -hmm. like pod areas. And then there, there's like a monorail type thing that, that runs around it. And yeah. Oh, that's really cool. The so. instrument, um, and now we can see the 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 other one. So, this one, what what was the what was the the instruction to do to do this? You have like I don't know, because there are so many details. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, where all his memorabilia and all his yeah. his collections from all his missions and uh, his life in in starfleet and then there's supposed to be a computer aspect of it and this is a very kind of basic version compared to what we ended up with you know this sure. is this was the the jumping off point before we before we actually um started building the set and it, mm. it's it kept the it kept the bones of the space but then you know where he's sitting there at the desk became this um, became this kind of portal in the wall that looked out onto a huge, enormous kind of underground mm. archive um, that had the drones that that run around, and then the the painting materializes mm. in front of them. 
problem. And, and it, you know, it, this is the beginning. And then it went through a bunch of other iterations that kind of uh, happened on the fly as we were building it. And, and, and they uh, ask you yeah. to be kind of accurate, like, uh, well, this button is for this, the button is for that, uh, or yeah. no, this, uh, this, to yeah, a certain, to to a be certain yeah. more. Yep, to a certain extent. And they they even uh you know want they want the actors to make it look as as believable as possible. So, you know, sure. this is the area where we're gonna have the weapons, this is the area that steers the ship, this is the area, you know, they yeah, they think of all that stuff for sure. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. because if not they were gonna receive like ten thousand emails. <laughs> this yeah. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right. Oh, very very aware of all that and, <laughs> uh, and how that affects uh kind of how people view the show you know it, it, there's a huge fan base and there's a very dedicated fan base and we're we're very aware of that yeah and and we try and be as careful and true as possible yeah. while still bringing bringing new things and new blood into the show yeah mm. no no i think it was the first season is perfect. It's just in. I I love that all the same time uh, you get played with the nostalgic part. You know, like bringing old old characters and yeah. No, yeah, it's nice to see that. It's nice to see the old crew come in. And, yeah, yeah. The, the Borgs. I never was expecting that. You know. Yeah. It's it's a really original. The script, I think, you know, like the oh, wrong sure. art. I don't know. You, yeah. you know who, how, how that came was a. I I mean I. How how the idea for the script came about? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I I feel like you're better off looking looking through their their uh, like Comic Con interviews and things like that. They'll, uh, they'll sure. say it much better than I. Like you know, I'll. I'll get it wrong, I'm sure, and then I'll get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I don't yeah. want to get you in trouble. But yeah. you, you can agree that it's a really original idea. Because for me, Star Trek is something that had so many years, so many movies, TV shows. Yeah, sure. So it's hard to do something that is fresh, you know? Yeah. Especially yeah. With, a, with a character that everyone already knows. So, no, I think was a was really was really cool was really fresh was really um emotional at the end yeah. the, mm -hmm. the relation with between data yeah yeah and all this yeah so you guys are working in a second season yeah working on the second season yeah but of course you can talk anything about it because uh <laughs> can't say where no i think people people know now that there's a second season happening yeah. in production and that's that's it that's all i can yeah i can say, I cannot say anymore yeah. yeah but it's not in production what's that it's in production uh, it's it's not in production it's in in uh pre-production ah. we are we are designing we're in the design phase yeah yeah well, you have a lot of time to design this time, I think. With, yeah, uh, we have some time. Yep. <laughs> with, with COVID, yeah, we're well, we're we've been on and off. So, yeah. how do you do it? So you you keep working from from your home? Uh, we work you, from you home work? for a little bit. We work from home for a little bit. Yep. Yeah, but, but now you, you know, you're working. Like, like a lot of there are a lot of shows in in. Uh, Hollywood now that are are starting with with COVID preparations and precautions, make sure yeah. people are safe and yeah. you know get them tested every week and making sure yeah. that you know if you, you know you're you're kind of staying in your pod of production so you're not if God forbid someone has it and comes out comes down positive with the disease they're only infecting a certain amount of people and then yeah. all of those people kind of break off and yeah. it's. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it's not easy, but it's possible. It's it's not it's not easy. It's and it's uh, certainly more expensive and and mm. but you know, they're trying to get us back to work as much as possible and trying to you know, sure. 
keep keep people's uh keep food on people's tables and you know no, keep, that's cool. so the at, the, at the moment you are working on that and other projects or you're 100 percent uh... you know i'll take i'll take some freelance stuff from time to time but it's you know it's pretty much once i'm mm. once i'm on a show like this it's a 12-hour day usually so sure. And I have two kids, so it's difficult to to do much on the weekend with with two kids. Yeah, in a I understand. Day, <laughs> week, yeah, for sure. Well, Joe, come on. I we we did uh, a little more than one hour. I know you, and for sure, I know you're a busy guy. So I really want to thank you for your time. Of course, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, or give us some insight. Surprise me that you called me because uh, <laughs> and we're looking forward for the second season. Yeah, so am I. And um, well, stay safe, stay healthy. <laughs> and well, maybe maybe after we 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 get out of this uh, crazy situation of COVID and stuff, we can talk to uh, each other again. Sounds talk good. Yeah. Yep. So live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> and vanilla ice, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Nice talking to you. Bye.